Well, US uh, Treasury Janet Yellen is on a four day tour to China, and she's the second high ranking US official to visit the country after Secretary of State Antony Blinken visited the country last month. Helen's visit is seen as the latest step to implement the important consensus reached by the two heads of the state of China and the United States at 2022 G20 Bali Summit with the aim of strengthening bilateral communication and exchange in the financial field. She has stated that the U.S. seeks healthy economic cooperation with China but healthy economic competition when both sides benefit. It's only sustainable if that competition is fair. That was highlighted by the top-ranking U.S. official. Tensions between the two countries have shot up in the recent years since U.S.-China trade war started in 2018 during the Trump era. Today, geopolitical tensions continue amid accusation over China's purported spy balloon in U.S. That uh, U.S. airspace was violated, that was something that was taken up. As well as their battle for tech supremacy. A visit comes weeks after Secretary of State Antony Blinken's visit to Beijing, the first high-level meeting between the two countries after months of tensions. A special report. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen touched down in China on Thursday to kick off a four-day visit as part of a push by the Biden administration to stabilize relations with Beijing. Trade and security likely top the agenda. In what analysts believe is a timed message ahead of Yellen's touchdown, China announced export controls on two rare metals, germanium and gallium, used in high-speed computer chips, night vision devices, radars, and satellites. China's former vice minister of commerce, through state media, warned the export controls are just the start and a, quote, well-thought-out heavy punch against layers of U.S. restrictions on China's technology. A report from the Wall Street Journal a week ago said that the U.S. government is mulling new rules to restrict chip sales to China that could be used for AI. Analysts say China's latest move on the metals is also a shot across the bow for Japan, as well as the Netherlands, which were under U.S. pressure to restrict sales of chip-making equipment to China. This is Beijing's second biggest countermeasure against the U.S., analysts say, after it banned key industries within China from buying gear from U.S. chipmaker Micron in May. We believe that it's in the best interest of both countries to make sure we have direct and clear lines of communication at senior levels. In the economic realm, regular exchanges with our Chinese counterparts can help us monitor economic and financial risks, and it can help create the conditions for a healthy economic relationship between our two countries. I believe that's particularly important right now as the global economy faces headwinds like Russia's illegal war in Ukraine and the lingering effects of the pandemic. The U.S. seeks healthy economic competition with China. But healthy economic competition, where both sides benefit, is only sustainable if that competition is fair. I also think that a shift toward market reforms would be in China's interests. A market-based approach helped spur rapid growth in China and helped lift hundreds of millions of people out of poverty. It is a remarkable economic success story. I've made clear that the United States <coughs> does not seek a wholesale separation of our economies. We seek to diversify and not to decouple. A decoupling of the world's two largest economies would be destabilizing for the global economy, and it would be virtually impossible to undertake. I also made clear that actions we take to protect our national security are designed to be narrowly targeted, and that they are premised on straightforward national security considerations they're not undertaken to gain economic advantage over China. My colleague um, Sanjay Suri is joining us live on the broadcast, getting us more details and perspective on the story. Sanjay, a very important visit, the second high-ranking top use official uh, in China for that very crucial visit, economic cooperation, mutual interests, and soothing of the ties between two countries. 
Well, um, we've been hearing about decoupling, and of course we can see, and the world can see that decoupling the economies of China and the U.S. is going to be very difficult. They're very heavily enmeshed, and both sides clearly have an interest in keeping that going. But the immediate provocation is the question of decoupling of another kind and at another level. And that is between security and political concerns on the one hand and business interests on the other. There has been growing concern uh, based on mounting evidence that advanced uh, chips and semiconductors developed in the U.S have been siphoned off to China and for use in the military, in missile systems, in artificial intelligence systems. And this is something that the US has tried to block. And the Chinese reply has been to now move to block this uh, supply of uh, germanium and gallium that go into making of these chips in the first place. So this is a Chinese hitting back at the US for its own uh, defense interests measures. Hmm. Complicated. Uh, further is the fact that the U.S. has been seeking to block Chinese firms from accessing such uh, sensitive uh, equipment that has potentially lethal military use. And now, as of the 1st of July, uh, China has passed a new law uh, saying that it is going to have its own surveillance system on American companies and to block them from accessing China's sensitive information, including uh, military data systems. So this is a confrontation underway, and the most really that uh, this visit could achieve uh, would be to try and open up lines of communication to stop this getting any worse. Sanjay Suri, my colleague, getting us all the details on the story. Sanjay, thank you for your time, and thank you for joining us on this broadcast.